Okay, so next we're going to look at the six the six trig functions. Um, some will refer to these as the six circular functions, since uh, since really we define them in terms of the unit circle. Okay, so we have. Sine theta, we have cosine theta. And again, remember that sine and cos, they are defined in terms of the unit circle, right? So, so they're the primary functions. Right? There's a bad unit circle. Okay. So cosine is the x-coordinate, sine is the y-coordinate on the unit circle. So we have these primary ones. Um, so if we start thinking of these as functions of a real variable, and maybe we'll think of them as sine x, cos x. Um, it's a little bit confusing because we have x, y on the circle. Uh, domain is, is r. And let me just, for reference, we're going to point out what are the zeros of the sine function. The zeros are at 0, plus or minus pi, plus or minus 2 pi, and so on. So any multiple of, of pi. Cosine, the domain is also r. Uh, the zeros, right, so sine is equal to zero when, when the y-coordinate is zero, so at the x-intercepts. Um, cos is equal to zero at the y-intercepts. So at plus or minus pi over two, plus or minus three pi over two, plus or minus five pi over two, and so on. So all the odd multiples of pi. Okay, um, now we'll get to tan theta. So tan theta is defined as sine theta over cos theta. Um, one way that you might want to think about it, it's, it's really... Um, you know, it's really slope. Okay? It's the slope of this line segment, right? Because it's y over x, it's rise over run. So tan is sort of measuring the slope. Um, and the reason that I mentioned the zeros for cosine is that, of course, tan is given by dividing sine by cos. And that means that the domain, the domain for tan, is got to be, well, x can't equal plus or minus pi over 2, plus or minus 3 pi over 2, and, and so on, right? It can't, it can't equal the places where cos is 0. Um, but it's equal to 0 at all the places where sine was equal to 0. So at x is equal to 0, plus or minus pi, plus or minus 2 pi, and so on, okay? Um, now those are the three main trig functions, but you can also look at their reciprocals. So there's also cosecant theta, which is one over sine theta. There's secant theta, which is 1 over cosine theta, and there's cotangent theta, which is cos theta over sine theta, which is the same thing as 1 over tan theta, okay? All right. Now, a um, couple other things that we can we can say about these. Um, 
sine theta and cos theta, they're always between minus 1 and 1, right? Because they are coordinates on the unit circle, right? And the y range for the unit circle and the x range for the unit circle is minus 1 to 1. All right. So, so these two are what's called bounded. Um, they're also, they also have this property of being periodic, right? Because once you go once around the circle, you're back to where you started and the, and the values start repeating. Um, and that periodic property is, is inherited by all six of the, of the circular functions, right? Um, but uh, the other ones are not bounded. All the other ones have vertical asymptotes, right? All these places where, where these are undefined are vertical asymptotes for these functions, right? Um, so cosecant is going to have vertical asymptotes at all the integer multiples of pi. Secant is going to have vertical asymptotes at all the odd multiples of pi over 2, right? Cotan is going to have vertical asymptotes at all the multiples of pi, uh, and so on, right? Um, and, and of course, um, since these ones are always less than or equal to 1 in absolute value, um, cosecant and secant are always bigger than or equal to 1 in absolute value. Um, so I, I mentioned this because in the next video, uh, we're going to briefly look at graphs for these six. So we're going to change gears, right? We're going to, rather than think, thinking of these as, as functions now of an angle, we're going to think of them as functions of a real variable. We're going to plot them in the cart Cartesian plane. So what we're kind of doing is you imagine as, as you go out along the x-axis, if you imagine that's your angle varying, you're going to watch, you know, what happens to the x-coordinate, what happens to the y-coordinate, and you're going to plot those, right? And, and this is going to generate uh, the graphs for these. So we're just going to give you a rough idea of what the graphs look like because um, they're going to come up and it's useful to, to have that picture in your head for these functions.